Hi, welcome to Angel Theory Paradigm Shift. I am Nick Raymond Ball. The date is 24th of March 2019. This will be the first of a series of videos that will become ever shorter as I seek to create a three minute super summary of sorts for Kate Raworth, Steve Keen, and others. Um, this is the general website that uh, most information goes on. There were websites from 2012 and 2011 that have some information worth seeing, but this one, angeltheory.org, is where you go. Um, this se section that I'm going to be talking about now, SES, Savings Efficiency Spin, um, is going to go here. At the moment, the home page shows a little, shows the, the RES principle, the RES, R-E-S equation. You can see it here, and to see that, you just watch these videos here. One, two, three. Nice and simple, less than half an hour. Don't try going through the, uh, the web page. Because without the videos and without the uh, spreadsheets, it's a very, very hard thing to do. This page basically complements the spreadsheet. Okay, you see all the points or about points on the spreadsheet, etc., etc. So, rather than go that route for now, anyway, just watch those three videos. There they are. One, two, three. Um, I'm going to keep this part on the web page. And if we go down further, we come to the beginning of the first, well, not the first, the, the uh, a previous version of the home page, which summarizes the eight books in the series. And these eight books could also be super summarized here in this uh, slideshow where you get little pointers of what each thing does. VSN, very important. Very, very important. The principal system, many would say. As well, GCS and extension. Sorry, as well, films. Anyway, we're not here to uh, discuss these parts. What we're here to do is discuss this summary of the book okay so this is s world super economics an audacious idea from the angel theory paradigm shift series book two a more creative capitalism and this is what i'm working on at the moment it's basically a summary of the two books in the a more creative capitalism series And this beginning of this section, which is sort of what I'm writing out here, we can see it coming together. This will, the summary of that will then appear on the top of the Angel Free website before we get to this section here. And all of this stuff that's currently on the home page will be moved down. Okay, so getting to the spreadsheet. If you've not already seen History 2, um, it is the same idea. Here is History 2. Exactly the same thing, but we start with higher E and spin, which will, I'll explain that to you soon. And um, we give realistic expectations as opposed to guarded expectations. In this latest version, History 3, in place of uh, using the uh, spin, the SES apparatus, straight out of the gate with... We have only one spin, which will make more sense. 
uh, which makes it a lot easier. It doesn't make more sense. It makes it a lot easier to to show and to make collaborative efforts, etc., etc. So let's have a look at this spreadsheet. When complete, it's going to be big. It's going to be about a quarter of a million cells. And don't think of this as a spreadsheet. Think of this as the design for the software. If you do not know about database-based software, which is how pretty much every uh, website runs that has uh, any sort of technical search or, you know. Um, so, yeah, don't see this as a spreadsheet. See this as the basic design for the software. And the software is going to make it a lot easier because at the moment, this is what we call the I really got to change these all to SES because it has changed instead of revenue efficiency spin it is now savings efficiency spin because as you'll see later savings is more appropriate but for now it's called the res calculator seems to be the S calculator and that's this here and uh, as software I can make as many spins as I want if we notice we go down we start with one then two then three, then four, and five. And you've got to do it again and again and again and again just to make one history. Um, whereas the software, we can just plug it in. It's uh, We can just make a very, uh, we can easily change the spin in one year. Therefore, making, that someone could do a reasonable history within, you know, five, ten minutes with the software once it's created and it's not there's nothing here that I can't do with a couple of programmers we don't need whilst we're looking for we don't need Microsoft or Facebook or Google to help out to do this develop this section of things uh, albeit you know it, it's, it can only improve um, my point is this is not software that I'm talking about that uh, is very very hard to make this is not that hard to make okay um what have we got at the top here and um, what are we doing in general okay so global output i just sorry i'm basically re-refreshing myself about this spreadsheet because i haven't looked at it for about three months and um in part this is so that i can make a better video so as I can give a more fluid delivery. But in part because actually me having forgotten what I've done here and having to go over it is a great way to show it to somebody else who has the time to uh, to watch it. I This will be a two-hour video, I expect. No one's got time to watch that unless they've already watched the three-minute one, which led on to a more elaborate ten-minute one, which led on to a more elaborate half-hour one. And then there's, you know, there's the, the one that really goes into the detail of everything. Okay, so what are we doing here? Global Output GDP. Okay, this is uh, 2017 GDP. I believe it to be World Bank, $80 trillion. Okay. Now that's multiplying by something. Okay, there we go. Global growth. So we set global growth at 102 percent, but uh, I haven't included inflation in this. But inflation does become an issue uh, at the very end. We can see a section here which changes things. It changes the, uh, at the moment, we're looking to do two things from this uh, history. In this history, we want two things. One, my target was to get uh, Malawi's percentage of GDP at above 1% by 2080. That was one target I gave to myself. And... Uh, Albeit, note that I had in the previous one, history three, history two, we get to this figure by 2048. This is a, this history three is a reserved history, so as people don't say, well, you're not going to get that much for 
uh, development, you're not going to get that much for trade, you're not going to get that much in sales of cities, etc. etc. So I've cut all that down to points where it's very difficult to argue with. Uh, what do they call it? Under promise and over deliver. Okay, but if note these changes. Uh, if there was no inflation, things would be better. If there was no inflation and the... Uh, sorry, I said that would have been... If there's no inflation and 2.5% growth, things get better. 1.44% of GDP. If global growth stagnates and the growth rate in Malawi is 5%. That changes to 5% of GDP, huge swing. If Malawi is at 2.5 and global growth is at, global trade rather, is at, Malawi trade rather, sorry, is at 105, which is what we have, we have the 107. However, if we sort of include inflation at, uh, I think, 2.5%, then that means growth in total that year of 105 and if Malawi's trade was 107 that cuts that 1% down to 0.8% and should there be higher um, 107% growth plus inflation and Malawi's growth plus inflation is still only 2.5% above cuts it down even further to 0.6 however if uh, same deal Sorry, I'm going to correct this as I go. Same deal if uh, growth and inflation are 107, but Malawi's growth tra uh, trade ex trade figures 5% are 5% better, 112, then uh, it would have 2.12% of GDP. Um, also, if things slow down for both. 1.78% GDP. If things stay exactly as they are today for both, 0.4% of GDP. If uh, things improve to 105%, but uh, sorry, it's not necessarily an improvement. If uh, if things increase to 105% global and Malawi match that, it would only make 0.24% of GDP. So there's a big swing. Um, about inflation and about the difference between the growth. There's obviously, this is another factor as well, Malawi growth real estate, but uh, I haven't worked that yet because it doesn't seem to be so, uh, so important because I have, the, the, there's a lot of good reasons why we should get that growth. So there's no need to overanalyze something that we think we might get. Um little quote from uh, Steve Keen here, care of Kate Rowoff, trying to analyze capitalism without leaving while leaving out banks, debt and money is trying to analyze birds ignoring that they have wings. Good luck. Okay, we're going to be looking at this statement really. Um basically an answer to that system is this system looks at all of that stuff it takes all of this very very much into account and money is actually the central figure and that's not because i thought it, that is how it should be it's actually a long tail and uh, <laughs> you know that phrase in latin where the, the basic of it is he who uses latin to throw into words who throw into sentences to make him sound more clever. Now, I've, I'll be guilty of that. I've done a little bit of Latin spotting, got some few good phrases. But when it comes to changing things and starting from theoretical physics, which includes general relativity, includes quantum mechanics, and it includes string theory, and using those systems to uh, to make an economy 
has really worked for me and yet I don't know any of the math. I know what the basics are, you know, the philosophy behind it, the principle, what it is supposed to do. And I have mimicked that. And that's, uh, I think the point is, as far as uh, Steve Keen is concerned, is that at one point I realized that the string, i.e. string theory, which is how to connect quantum mechanics and general relativity to make a theory of everything as per the Hawking film title. Um, there, the answer came out is the string is money. And when I heard that uh, Steve Keen says that money is not a factor in current macroeconomics, that's when I started to read economics to try and work out how what the, how the context is and you know there's still a conversation to be had about that the point is this system what you're about to see is completely money is the the, the central feature okay uh, another point from Kate Raworth actually da Donella Meadows care of Kate Raworth well Kate Raworth is growth is one of the stupidest purposes ever invented in culture we've got to have enough now what that basically means is given the option between 1.07 as is presented and 2.12 the optimum is more like that 1.07 that's what we're a aiming for because 1.07 is enough. And if everybody went for 2, 2%, we would be making so much stuff that is not needed. So anyway, there is a, there is a point to this, and that is to get countries as quickly as they can, country, poor countries as quickly as they can, to become being rich countries and the point of that is they're going to slow their demographic they're going to slow down the population growth because in Europe and America population growth is a lot slower the best way to bring that to Africa and Asia is to emulate the European model in my opinion uh, it's certainly there doesn't seem to be any other options not if we want to get population down in time and at the same time eventually uh, curbing GDP to a point of zero so as everybody's getting what they want but it's not increasing anymore there has to be a point where enough is enough we're making enough stuff you know the, of course one can go you know get more into recycling as much as possible um, I don't know maybe even in the future we can do resequencing but uh, anyway right where are we we're right at the bottom here we haven't even looked at it yet um so let's look at what uh what it, what we're looking to try and achieve okay and here's the results on column 2821 now see here 2024 there's a gdp of about 2.8 billion Okay, 2032, that increases to 53 billion. 2048, 433 billion. 2056, 1.2 trillion. 64, 1.8 trillion. 2080, 4 trillion. But uh, these figures are a relative there uh, that these are future figures you really have to just look at the percentage of GDP growth a uh, percentage of GDP I here it's basically 1% of GDP so if GDP this year is 80 trillion then this Malawi's uh, GDP that year would be 80 million 8 billion 800, 800 billion something like that 
So, okay, next is how many houses can we build with this if we assign 6.25% of cash flow and GDP to social housing? Oh, more to the point, it's a, it's a bit more of a teacher woman to fish social housing uh, policy, but it gets the job done. That's the target. I had two targets for history B. So all I set out to do. And that is one, percentage of global GDP over 1%. And two, make over 10 million houses. And these are very nice houses. They're not uber mansions. They're not even mansions. But they're, you know, each, each plot would be 400 square meters you know what that is it's not much less than 400 square yards um and you know they they, they got to have have a, have quite a bit spent on them so that's a very good social housing program whereas you're not building social housing you're building the new suburbs for the new rich and then eventually everybody in Malawi is rich because they've all got their house etc etc um okay we're going to see how we get to these figures this is a a place where I can change the uh, percentage of GDP that uh, we want to assign to housing. As a general note, that 50% of GDP is assigned to other currently. The balance, 43.75%. That's. That's the 50% for other and the 6.25% for housing is allocated to special projects. We're going to go straight up to these special projects right now. But first of all, we're going to look at another special project. And this is from this. It really was the first special project. Um, African rain. Uh, the reason this is here is because we've given some figures here. The reason Sienna Forest is here is each one of those houses is built within a city or a town that is what's known as, uh, I think it's called Z net zero, less than net zero emissions. So, i.e., there's no coal fire plants, it's solar everywhere, every single thing is done to make sure that uh, the carbon footprint is as low as it can be um and that is basically the first law of s -world. so there's it's not a small thing it is the fundamental underlying principle um okay uh, one way to do that in our test country of malawi which has i think about 50 50 million miles 50 million miles or something like that of poorly produced farmland that's making very little oxygen turning that into uh, a combination of rural sorry a combination of cities and towns but all the way through these cities and towns at least half has to be given back to nature reserve and those nature reserves get developed and they'll have all the nice animals in them you know um bringing it back to nature basically okay um and uh, and that basically answers the question about uh, growth theory versus climate change. And if anybody seen um, William Nordhaus and mm -hmm, mm -hmm, Paul Roma, sorry, 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 uh, win their Nobel prizes, uh, some may beg the question how can Paul Roman's growth theory work with climate change because more growth equals more damage that's that's the point this entire city is this site it's just sorry it's not a not a city it's a plan for many 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 cities is net zero it does no damage or it does good or if it can only break even it will have to go and buy a load of rainforest somewhere else to preserve it to ever and that's basically these the, the two sienna forest initiatives one if we're going to 
fine, 20 miles of square land to make a development. 10 miles of that will be returned back to Nature Reserve. The other is that if, um, if one is not at net zero in, in certain areas, one can buy forest around the land and preserve it as a way of making the net zero less than net zero. <laughs> Right, okay. Let's have a look here at S World Water, the first project. Now, <laughs> this is where people need to help me out. Okay, because I don't really know. I know that uh, Google tells me that for 1.3 million US dollars, Adelaide built a desalination plant that served 250,000 people. Okay. I know how much money we're expected to make in 2024. Uh, I've reversed it back. I know how much in 2032. I know how much, and this is cash GDP cash flow. Um, GDP cash flow is different to cash flow because GDP cash flow is actually half of what cash flow is because of the um, cash flow to GDP variable, uh, which basically says that half of stuff, half of the half of one's cash flow goes into m making stuff. The other half is its sell price. David A. Moss ca cash flow variable. We'll get into that later. Anyway, there we go. We can see the different figures of the cash flow the uh, Malawi network expects to have. We can see that in this case we've gone for another 6.25% allocation. Um, and we're saying, well, if Adelaide costs 1.3 million, what I want to do is make it, uh, it can't it needs its own solar arrays and lots of them because the most power, uh, the most costly thing in desalination is the electricity. So I don't know, added 0.7 million. So uh, yeah, point, the 700 million to the 1.3 to make a cost of 2 billion per desalinization plant. And also remembering that the more we make, you know, the cheaper it gets to make them. That's just how things work, unless. Uh, it's using a lot of gold or precious metals. Um, okay, so there we've got uh, the amount of plants. And the amount of plants drinking water people can provide. And overall, we're supplying drinking water for... 60 million people. Now, there's only 20 million people in Malawi. Um, they've got a huge freshwater lake, which is very advantageous. Um, so they have relatively good water to start with. Um, their population could well increase by t double. So it could go from 20 to 40. Um, that's kind of the figure I used for the houses, 10 million houses, then the 40 million people, uh, plus these, there are other houses, these are just the social houses, there are other houses that are made commercially. Um, and, and in this case, uh, I think we only need water for, t extra water for 20 million people. So I've divided that 6.125 allocation to 6.2, to 1.2.1%. So we, at the moment, will allocate 2.1% of network income to water, the creation of water. Uh, we've still got to pay for the um, the piping, etc. Which and it's not going to be easy for in Malawi. It'd be a lot easier in the Middle East countries, the top of Africa. Any any country that goes into the sea, basically, Malawi has to go through Mozambique, and I think it's about 75 miles of piping would be needed. The general idea being dump it in, uh, flop, not dump it, f 
let it flow into the lake on the one side, stocking the lake up, and on the other side of the lake, take take the water out that's uh, needed for the people and for the, uh, the the project, of course. Okay, obviously one has to add to that water for agriculture, etc., when in, if necessary. Right, so that is the uh, that is the bottom. That is the that is you know that, that that's that's the the objective, I suppose. Okay, there's another little quote here again by Kate Raworth. Uh, people may say I have a crush. If so, it is a mental crush on her last book, which had so many awesome quotes and. So, what if we started economics not with long established theories, but with humanity's long term goals? Then sort out economic thinking that will enable us to achieve them. Well, this is exactly this, you know. We're, whilst we're looking at things at the moment in 2080, we've got to remember that this is a very, very prudent forecast, and the more likely forecast, history too got to this point by 2048 um, and it included a good number of recessions and uh, depressions okay so we're going all the way to the top of the spreadsheet now so again this figure here is an input when you see the purple figures you see the inputs and you can see it is increasing each year by 0.25 percent. Malawi growth rate is 1.5 so in it, what you can do is the reason uh, you see one one if I want to change that to 1110 I do and it changes it throughout the whole. Okay so we can see this one changes to here. Malawi real estate growth we see that here. E, efficiency, 90%, we'll talk about that in a minute, well let's talk about it now, okay, so at the moment we're looking at the uh, res calculator, and it's exactly the same as the SES calculator, SES calculator, it's just the word revenue and the R has been changed to savings and an S, so there's no problem doing it calling it either way um, it was rest for first done in 2012 this was so it's been rest for a long time okay revenue or savings times by so you see we got six billion in revenue here or savings Six billion in revenue savings. Six billion in revenue allocated to savings, I guess, is the correct way. Um, of those savings, of those savings, ninety percent. And this is the E. E equals ninety percent. Ninety percent is spent on goods, services, and labor from other companies in the same network. And uh, after taking away 10% from the 6.3 million in, 6.3 billion in savings, one has 5.6 billion in cash flow basic math basic math revenue savings times 90 percent gives us this 5.6 figure spin one at this point 360 days that fig that has to be spent by the 1st of January 2025, which is a year. Okay. 
But uh, going to the next year, we'll get to why that figure is increased in just a second. Getting to the next year, uh, instead of an E of uh, 90, it's moved to 91. And instead of there being one spin, there's two spins. That means this amount of cash flow that has come from the revenue savings and 9% uh, of it has gone elsewhere, 91% is spent within the network. Obviously, at the end, sorry, if we cut, cut the year roughly in the middle, so on the 11th of July, that money must be spent by. That means the network of companies still has that money within it. Yeah? And it times is it again by 91% to give it this amount of cash flow. And what we've done is we've doubled the cash flow. And we've created a system where at any time this money that we will insist is initially given to us in cold hard cash, uh, not credits, not a, not a number, not a, we're not borrowing from a bank that is already leveraged, leveraged. We want cash payments and we build this big wonder, maybe a big pyramid or a cube, made of very thick bomb-proof glass and within that cube we show the money. So as everybody can always see that at any one point if everybody wanted to cash in their money and get their money from the bank, they could. We would not let them, of course, because that's not how it works. But they can all see that the money is there. Hopefully, I don't know, some security guy is going to say that's crazy, you know. But we do have the Operation Fort Malawi, which is to get some soldiers, special forces, jets, etc. From as many countries as want to contribute. And we fight the uh, ivory poachers. We bring the fight back to them, jets, patches. Special forces, save the elephants, save the rhinos. And of course, those guys, we can put that big pyramid of cash and gold and whatever in the uh, the middle of Fort Malawi. So it's, you know, got a few tanks, you know. Okay. Um, just continue to understand this res principle. This is our savings, this is our revenue. Now E is at 92, so 92% of the initial revenue becomes cash flow to be spent before the 12th of May. Then on the 12th of May, the companies start again and uh, they have an 8% spillage. They still got 8.9 billion which is to be spent by the 11th of September. This then moves back to the beginning again, this money, 8.9 billion needs after the, uh, take away the 8% spillage, times it by 92%, leaves 8.2 billion, which needs to be spent by the 1st of January next year. Again, at every single point, this revenue figure here, is in is in the bank revenue after e is what's left in cash flow in the bank this and we i just re reiterate or i don't know if i've actually mentioned it so far that this is a very 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 more rigid system than the current rate current way people use mostly use to increase the money supply, which is the bank deposit rate. Whereas the bank has, say if the bank had this 10 billion here, it would lend 90 billion out based on the fact it only has to have 10% of its uh, liabilities in cash. So this, in this great, 
in the USA, this 10 billion we see here in red, or 10.5, it is turned into 90 billion by the banks. Whereas in this situation, this money is sat in, in a huge, great big container and it's never touched it's always there and people can always see it and if everybody wanted their money back at the same time they could there is exactly that amount of money that instead of the uh, the bank deposit process increasing the money supply we just organize it to spin it faster and we can see the spin changes so it's four five six seven eight you can see by the time we're getting to, uh, what are we here? We're at spin 22. We're starting to get some really high figures. GDP, $313 million. So at this point, uh, Malawi would have caught up to, well, we'll be catching up to South Africa. Okay, let's just go back to the top and um, and start the entry again let me just pause because I need to get a drink okay I am back so we have spoken about these purple figures these purple uh, cells being input figures there is GDP 2017, global growth 102.5, Malawi growth 105, Malawi growth in real estate 105. So that second one was Malawi growth and trade. Let's have a look at how these figures play out and where they're inputted. Okay, so <coughs> for this here, the uh, global trade. This copies down to here, and this basically copies all the way along, so as it all gets actioned by this figure here. Now, I have gone for AGOA exports, that's to the USA, free trade agreement, of $1 million. And EBA, that's the same thing for Europe. African exports, other exports, and sales to Malawi all of which are one million dollars which is an impossibly uh, low figure considering the amount of uh, cash flow there is um, I did originally put figures of naught here because I didn't want to include them at all I wanted to show that the uh, Malawi growth real estate on its own would be enough but um, it made a lot more sense to put some uh, token figures in here so we can see the math and uh, we can also change these figures here and it should change throughout the spreadsheet okay so that's the uh, this is the trade which is controlled by this which powers this okay so the initial input times by 0.25 percent gives this figure here Okay, these figures here are added up to here, which is the sum total of uh, all trade. Below it, we have real estate from the, uh, the, the, the first grand network. It probably will be called Angel City 1. Uh, goes by other names, Network City. It's fact, mm, yeah. So there we see Angel City and the Network City and other towns. And these figures, put it this way, uh, everything generally gets built around a hospital, a very, very luxurious hospital, which will have a artificial lake in front of it, beaches, etc., 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 we were to sell one of the apartments that uh, came off of that uh, or one of the villas that came off of that hospital went down to the beach where the uh, medical 
attention for anybody in that villa is the same as if they were in normal hospital so it's very 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 good treatment there and then whenever needed 24 7 um you know that treatment there's a lot of people getting old i live with my parents at the moment and you know a lot of their friends they they keep dying you know when people get old they get sick uh, the more older people there are, the more demand there is going to be for a, um, a very safe, a very luxurious hospital experience. And therefore, selling off the villas at $20 million a piece, you only have to sell five to uh, make, that, uh, make that amount of money there. And obviously, there's a lot more than five villas in this plan. Network City. Network City is the idea that um, countries will have their own little parts of the city and they will all develop their own parts of the city. That money will be paid to S World developers to do the development. Other towns and cities, 264 other towns in fact are planned, 16 circling 16. So if there's 16 different locations spread evenly around Malawi, Around each of those locations will be another 16 sub-locations, and they will be basically towns. And this income stream is for development of those towns. Like before, it is totaled up. So this is the total of exports. This is the total of real estate sold from uh, Angel City 1, the Network City, and other towns. Aid. Uh, one billion we've put there and there's a lot of good reasons for this first of all there's about 140 billion to, uh, to in, in the pot so one billion is not much relative to the uh, amount of aid that there possibly could be um, but also because as we will see the res system makes it so that aid is a lot lot more efficient and all the software of course makes that efficiency even greater still so it's not just looking for aid it's the aid companies would like to put their money this way because out of that one million one billion uh, they will end up being able to put more than a billion on their balance sheet so they could actually technically be in profit i.e. the amount of good they did was more than the income they received, pound for pound. Okay, we also have Angel City 2. This is the idea, and it originally came from the, uh, the idea of a, a city for Elon Musk's effort efforts on Mars and the idea on Mars was instead of making a development and selling it property by property which you know really really is uh, confusing it's not confusing it really is there's a lot of there's a lot of moving parts there instead of doing that we just make one square mile developments for big companies or foundations or governments and uh, yeah, this is the idea in Malawi. Um, when I said that we had uh, the idea was to find 16 basic locations s spread evenly around the country, these are those 16, all of which were used in Res History 2. Da -da. Uh, but in this case, I've really closed it down. So there is the Angel City, Angel City 1. Then there's City 2, and we use City 3 and City 4. So we only ever go to Cities 1, 2, 3, 4, Building 4 Cities, and they happen at these times, 2024, 2032, 2048. So there's a long gap between each city, therefore supply and demand means that when I want 1 billion uh, per year for building a city, you know, that's... Again, it's relatively small numbers relative to what we're doing here. 
um, certainly for the Norwegian Sovereign Wealth Fund or other such funds or maybe a combination of endowments between the top universities yeah and of course this isn't a development in a city specifically is a city that has and it's you know, one is buying into the industry one is buying into the businesses all are part of the same thing okay so what we have is here 1.5 billion paid by a company such as the Norwegian Wealth Fund for the first year of creating a city that they will own mostly um, sort of half they will own it half the people will own it um, so that brings in 1 billion we've seen this token 5 million from exports and we've seen 262 million a not insignificant figure for the real estate sold in the city Angel City One, which starts in 2020. Okay, plus aid. We also have to add savings here, but because it's the first year, I haven't added the savings. It makes it easier to explain this way. And then we have the grand total. One, two, three, four, five. This grand total, follow the red to the red. is added by the initial investment. Initial investment of 4 billion adds to that 2 billion to create 6 billion or 6.3 billion. And that brings us our first um, figure in the res or the SES calculator. We're going to go down the SES calculator in a second. We've seen it a little bit, but uh, we'll see it in a little bit more detail. Just a point. If we think of this system here, the rest calculator, as Economics 101 in the first year, i.e. we have, uh, again, care of Kate Raworth, we have Paul Samuelson's The Plumbed Pipe Image from the first edition of his textbook economics from 1948 and it basically shows money flowing through public consumption to business consumption wages round and round and round it goes and it gets topped off with uh, additional investment and that's exactly what we've got here this uh, this money here is flowing around the system and is topped up with new revenue i.e. this is the second year as these increase that is new revenue which is added to the uh, existing uh, savings where are the savings here are the savings okay because in the first year, 90% was spent of this 6.3 million, 90% was spent on other companies in the network. Therefore, next year, other companies in the network have this figure because it has been, uh, the, the money has come from the other, all of this figure here, 90% of it rather ends up as the cash flow here because of that this cash flow if we go down to the beginning the end here of the res calculator we can see years cash flow we have the cash flow variable of 50 percent and that means we're estimating 2.8 billion in gdp uh, if we um, government's share direct 18.75 percent that's what the government is allocated they can spend it on what they want but they can't have it in cash 
Labour receives 25%, but 25% of what lab half of what Labour receives could also be considered government spending. Um, we'll get into that later, maybe. Um, and an increase to the mining supply of 90%. Then we have this figure here, this law of conservation of revenue, which is this just this figure here. Let me see at the top. that if there's no more spins this carries over to the next year you see and we go to the next year and we see makes makes more in trade so that gets added that's additional revenue that is this tap on the Samuelson diagram additional investment or additional revenue So we've got additional revenue, we've got additional revenue from real estate sales. We've got more aid is increasing because after the first year, uh, the aid companies can see that uh, they, they, they will end up having much better figures working in this way. And in general, the aid is spent in a much more efficient way. We add that to the city, second year of the city receiving investment. And we add that to the savings from the last year. This adds up to 8.5. So we've moved in one year from 6.3 to 8.5. Okay, this figure here, imports and assets, Hmm. Okay, this figure is actually incorrect there. I will need to... Uh, <laughs> need to work on that. Okay. Um, let's just quickly answer that question about... Uh, why it's it's good that um, the aid is spent more with the network than it is with uh, others, and we can move now to the right here. Let's just actually, as we've gone to the top, I'm gonna gonna do all the top that we haven't seen. E changes. So if you see this figure here, E. If we go down to 2032, we can see it will change 2032. You can see this figure here changes per this input. Okay. City size developments cost per year 1 billion that's this figure here growth 1.5 no growth 5% a year that's why it's 1.05 not 1 billion okay uh, of this 4 billion 1 billion may come from S project owners that's the super projects software mainly for now uh, 2 billion could come from active companies companies that are gonna um, trade in the network 500 million may come from ecological investors and about the same may come from philanthropic investors and other investors I don't see if the math works in the software backs it up I don't see getting this money as a problem considering the relative the success of this relative to any other project okay one second okay um, 
This is a results, so we can see the uh, percentage of global GDP. Let's just have a look where those figures come from. Here, I think. Yeah, here's GDP. There's, uh, there's here's global GDP, here's network GDP, and that calculation there creates the percentage of GDP. Okay, so we can see GDP increasing until we get to our target 1% 2080. This all looks like it could do a bit of... Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Hold on. Okay, we seem to have got away with that one. Excel crashed and but then opened with all the new figures saved so that's fine um, okay so percentage of GDP and then we've got the results of how many homes built 10 million by 2080 okay now we get to this section here this is uh, going into the second book, the first book, a more uh, S-Word Angel Wing, a more creative capitalism. This is yeah, the second book in the more ca creative capitalism series. Sorry, sorry, there are two books so far in the a more creative capitalism series. A more creative capitalism being a quote from Bill Gates' 2007. Harvard commencement speech that you should watch to understand the primary motivations behind the network. Okay, so here what I've done is I have picked 16 special projects. These special projects have come from, if we go to, you can see it here now, it's PDF only for the moment, and this is a work in progress, but uh, here we can see 64 reasons why, and you can see all the different projects summarized. This is the, a short version of a much longer book. Okay, but it's, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good enough summary for now. Um, and what we've got here, I've taken a few of the items, i.e. Spartan contracts, quality homes so that's the 6.25% uh, spent on uh, housing and that comes from the idea that labor gets 25% of cash flow or GDP and out of that 25 25% of their 25 being 6.25% must be spent on housing it's fact they won't have the money they just get the housing um okay uh global cooling solar and other green energy another big one uh tesla cars and infrastructure no point having a green city if you're driving um dirty cars through it and, you know, since 2011, I've been thinking about the way to implement this. And, is you know, if you don't think about it laterally, it's hard because how do you stop people buying um, fuel cars? And how do you uh, incentivize everybody in the entire city to only use electric? Well, the way you do that is to make every single house that gets built add 6.25% to it and that markup is what the what uh, is paid and for every house one gets 6.5 2.5% of that spent on whatever car they wish as long as it is green um so you've got say a million people in a city those million people have got a million and a half 
electronic cars or however many they have per person and because of that we can easily say no no uh, no petrol cars allowed other than the ultimate Ferraris etc etc it's important it's important to have those types of cars around I think they're an exception because they're exceptionally expensive but they do add to the prestige prestige marketing uh, a friend of mine Damani said uh, about a bottle of Moe you know you expect to pay what 300 rands here or 600 rands that's about 30 quid but if you're drinking the same bottle in Saint Tropez, you'd expect to drink, expect to pay ten times that much, because Saint Tropez is, well, it's very beautiful, but it's no more beautiful than others. It's just it has a reputation for being luxurious. It has a lot of prestige, hence the uh, champagne sells for more, and therefore everything else will sell for more, from real estate to to whatever okay so getting back to it um, project free advancing human potential UCS pay to learn that's basically a sort of welfare that gives people money but those people have to learn in a, on a temporary basis or they can play sports professionally lots of things uh, Virtual devices for education, 1.6% of um, cash flow GDP. Um, global health, super university resort hospitals, 1.56%. The desalinization, 3.125%. But as we saw below, as we saw below, we only needed 2.2% for the people, but for business and for farming one three point one two five percent is good um the building of angel city one and fort malawi the infrastructure for various projects including that uh investment the in uh, ai software and economics basically this is the special projects uh investment i believe peat tent and saskine boost that's uh, a, a, a fund for failing companies or if no company is failing it's a fund for boosting the weakest you have to understand the string theory to get that but uh, it's good it's good universal knowledge virtual and other education experience africa saving the rhinos the elephants 911 internet uh, S World Food and Siena's Forests. All that adds up to 50% of uh, whatever cash flow slash GDP we have. And look, this is this is a starter list. All of these some some will stay, but most of them will probably get put, cut in half. Um, and at the moment, I'm only doing 50% because it's 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 not unlikely that the other 50 percent will have to be spent specifically on industry goods materials etc etc i'm going to the right i am making these little uh, uh sections what is no these co these sets of columns for each of the ones we've uh, we've just looked over so we've got the spartan contracts global cooling more global cooling advancing potential advancing potential healthcare african rain that's water cities of science cities of science one infrastructure one standard we've got the sword angel wing software uh, with Pete Tent and Suskind Boosts, and let's just have a better look at that. Yep, that's all real. <laughs> uh, education, conservation, 
advancing human potential. That's what films, Sienna's forests. And we come back to this same familiar thing. And to the right are the next, this, I suppose, uh, if it all goes to plan, the next people that, who are going to be making histories are Kate Raworth and maybe Steve Keen. And this is ready for them to make their own. What do they want to see in the future? What do they want to see in the third world? What do they want to see? And so there's one ready player, one ready player, one, two, three, four, four new places. So as now, this final one, if we get to it here, is one that I have actually done. And this is where we get the figures for the housing and the figures for how much uh, cash flow GDP there is to spend each year. And it's easier to look on this tab here, 3B. In 3B, we can see it here and it can correlate. Uh, the reason all I've done is I've hidden all of the cells in between. I can't do that live because it throws all the images all over the places. Okay, so let's see how this works. Uh, per property is $150. Um, of which... $75 is expected to create the end result. It's uh, We've used the cash flow variable. So it's, it's... When we create the houses, the houses have a price. That price surely must be the GDP price, not the cash flow price. Because... If sold, they would be sold at GDP price. Um, and wrapped up in these calculations. Um, this is why I've... Uh, let's just have a quick look down there. This is why I've chosen 150,000. Whereas originally, I chose uh, 75,000 for the, for, the, for the... And this is only the, uh, the build cost. This doesn't include the uh, infrastructure. It doesn't include the um, doesn't include the infrastructure. Doesn't include the plot of land. This is the build cost. Um, I could be wrong. Hang on, I'm just trying to work this out. No, yeah, 150 is the cash flow cost. But when it comes to how many houses are built, you see I divide it by 50%. That's how that works, yeah. The amount of homes built is divided by 50%, and that's to offset the, uh, the David A. Moss cash flow variable, which basically says that you only... you only uh, count the final price if you use uh, the standard format. You only count the final price, you don't include the ingredients. So you don't, that 150,000, um, is what is what the house will sell for. No, that 150,000 is how much, oh, it's, it's, it's difficult. But the point is, I've erred on the side, side of caution. I think a lot of people working this would just to have say they've made 2.3 2369 houses built but for caution we we we're, we're saying it's only 1.185 okay so we go down the next year and note that the cost of the property increases relative to Where is it? Where's that little figure? E seventy three. E 
a there there we go the cost of the house to build rises each year because of basically it keeps in line with uh, the cost <laughs> sorry the cost increases each year for the build price to keep in line so as at the very end um, basically to keep in line with growth and inflation if it cost 150,000 one year it's going to cost 153,000 the next year following year it's going to cost 157,000 you get it and this carries on all the way down down and you can see each one we can see how many houses how many total houses build how many built that year this continues and it continues till we get to the end and we see that uh, 10 million there and this is then transferred to to here uh, to here houses built and to here houses built okay so one more thing before we go through the res 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 itself okay so we've seen this here list of special projects which is from 64 reasons why and um, in reading the donut economics or sorry donut economics by kate raworth kate raworth really had a very simple and elegant way of explaining what it is we're trying to do so she has the idea of the donut american donut with a hole in it in the middle there's the safe and just place for humanity at the top no sorry just above that the uh, ecological ceiling and below that is the social foundation above critically critical planet degradation climate change etc in the middle critical human deprivation inequality etc and the, the the point of Rawworth's book is we got to move all of the uh, all of this degradation and this uh, human deprivation out we got to get it out the skies and the uh, the equality we got to get it out of our way of life so as everything is in the middle of the donut and everything is nicely smooth and this is basically a very very simple way of explaining the 64 reasons why each of these 64 reasons is either outside the donut or it's inside the donut the, the whole inside the whole of the donut and um yeah so this system that's what it does it uh it, it brings everything inside so as well so as we can save our planet basically from either destroying ourselves from uh, global warning etc or destroying ourselves by the social foundation breaking down and we have wars you know uh, nuclear wars even so this isn't a small thing here okay so let's have another look a slightly more complex donut again by Kate Raworth albeit I think the graphic is by somebody else and there we just see more climate change, more of the uh, fresh water, biodiversity, air pollution. That's all got to be stopped and brought in. 
and inside there's the shortfall of all sorts of things that needs to be stopped as well now this is uh, Railworth's distributed network um, a network of flows structuring an economy as a distributive network can more equitably distribute the income and wealth that it generates great idea here's the s world version from 2012 and you can see our uh, distributive network is much the same as it is everywhere um but it's cubic and that's very important for what we call financial gravity not going to get too into it at the moment uh other things another thing to note this was the plan in 2012 with two cubes over the usa one cube over africa now due to what's called angel pop and thinking thereof there's one cube over the usa and two cubes over africa here is a 2012 version of the software the, the core design and here is 2016 version same same software but uh, a few extra bits added to it and started to write it in this circular format that was 2016 getting up to date now we can see the latest version quite detailed now and a lot of detail on all points here's the a subset of that from the backstory to book two the economic theory of everything working physics first as you can see and this is one we're working on the moment which highlights the pop principle which i'm not going to get into here here are the macroeconomics working away and we're going to lead into a graphic from experience africa because that is the first of the 64 reasons why okay and that uh that sums up that thread now it's time to just go down and have a have a look through these uh, t 60 years. No, uh, yeah, this 2024 to 2080. 50, 56 years. <laughs> yeah, one second. Okay, I'm back. So. We've looked at uh, looked at everything. We're just going to go down now, go year by year. Okay, so years are here, 2024, and in 2024, starting with four um, billion in investment plus five million in trade, 262 million in real estate sales 1 billion in aid just over 1 billion in a once what in a sale uh, development a city development for uh, an organization such as the Norwegian sovereign wealth fund uh, okay all that adds up to 6 billion there where after we have an E, an efficiency of 90%. Therefore, because we only have one spin this year, the, um, the cash flow left over is what this cash flow is. 6 billion, 6.3 billion times 90% equals 5.6 billion. That means 10% has been spent on other things that have nothing to do with the network, but 90% has been spent um, on things 
in the network. This adds up to this cash flow, which we half for GDP. And we have government figures of 18.75% of that cash flow, or of that, is that of the cash flow or the GDP of the cash flow? And Labour has 25%, albeit 12, half of Labour's income being um, welfare and the building of their own homes could be classed as government spending on welfare and social housing. It's called tax symmetry. Tax symmetry. Let's just write that down. Try like hardest to spell symmetry right. Tax symmetry. Yes, no. Oops. 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 Okay, where were we? We were here. Okay, so going to the next year, noting that we have, because we only had one spin, that 5.6 billion that was spent from one set of companies to another set of companies in its own network, that is left as savings at the end of the year. That is the amount of money that is still sitting in that prism of a bank the wonder and because of that the next year these humble inputs token token input for trade genuine input for real estate token input in in, in token city design to, token second city token second city okay uh, but this year we have two spins. So we add the cash flow together. Nearly doubles the cash flow. Cash flow is at 14 billion. Law of conservation of revenue savings, 7 billion. Same thing next year. These are just all increasing. Actually, the one thing that is increasing here is aid being the third year. Um, that has increased to two billion. Everything else is just increasing per these per their automatic uh, percentages, two point five or one point five or five rather. And um, here we see we're now spinning one, two, three times. First, all the money has to be spent before the twelfth of May. Second, that money then has to be spent by the eleventh of September, and then before the end of the year. Next year, four. And on. Next year, five. Adding this up. And this is increasing the cash flow significantly. Uh, but remembering that we're not using the uh, deposit bank rate. All of this money is always in the bank. That cash flow is 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 in the bank. There's no borrowing there. There's no leveraging. There's no uh, there's no deposit of 10% and the money is lent out nine times over. So if everybody wants their money back, they can't get it. Um, in place of that, we have a system where the money is always in the bank. If these guys suddenly said, I want my money, and we allowed them to, they would get their money. They would, you know, uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, it's a much, much more rigid. Of course, at this point, you know, from a revenue of 12, we're only making 53, which is nowhere near the US rate where a bank would hold 10 and make 90 but we get there you wait you wait spin six spin seven 
I think by this point the aid has pretty much gone away. Am I correct? Now aid is still there, a little bit of aid left, but it's going down. Eight spins. Nine spins. Now aid is at zero. Don't need aid anymore. Uh, GDP is up to 50 billion. That's five. That's 10 times what Malawi's GDP currently is. And we just carry on and on. Each year in this example, I add a spin all the way until I think it is 20, I think I stop at 32. Now, of course, there's some logistics behind spinning. You need to be able to increase productivity 32 times relative to uh, where one began. But if you've got 32 years to do that, and the many, many software systems monitoring then I don't think it's a big deal you know obviously some things take longer than others some services you could do probably 50,000 times in a year some um, export industry you can only do so many times in a year because you've got to take the uh, the length of time it takes to deliver and get parts so you know it's not likely that everything will be spinning at 32 times it will be some will be spinning more some will be spinning less and on average it works out at 32. if one uses the 32 at all may one prefer to be 24. but um, other thing to notice is that we've changed e let's have a little track on here i'm going to go back up you can see e goes up He, he goes up, keeps going up, really. Um, only goes down. In previous examples, the uh, history two, it goes down f to about 95 in places. But, uh, you know, this, this, is, this is the version that I've done. You see, by the time we're at... Uh, 2041 e is at 99% and the reason that that is if you lower it below 99% let's just take this this page let's quickly look at it what are we trying to make there 550 billion in cash flow make that 95% and you can see dropped a lot off okay so we carry on we carry on we carry on down we carry on down ah here we go by uh, we're also adding new cities so there's Angel City 1 created 2020 and City 2, 2024, City 3, 2032, City 4, 2048. The trade exports are still the token amount, and the, um, the Angel City real estate is uh, gone up by 5% a year. Okay, we carry on, we carry on, we carry on, and basically we carry on until we finish. Which is at Angel City 5. Angel City 5 is the name for the time 2080. Uh, it'll probably be its own city as well. But really we think of Angel City 5 as the time 2080. And finally we reach that. 1% of global GDP. 32 spins. 
an E of 99.5%. Savings, the law of conservation of revenue of 236 billion. That's what will be sitting in the giant pyramid. 236 billion dollars. Um, and that that's a huge the you that's that's a huge amount of money if it was it would be about the size of a tower block okay remembering growth is one of the stupidest purposes for uh, purposes ever invented by any culture yeah there has to be enough so the idea is this 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 initiative is throughout Africa and all of the poor countries basically uh, but at a point yeah there has to be enough once you know once we're here for example at one percent I don't want to see it go up to two percent of I don't want you know yeah okay um at the beginning we looked at the different variances there are the different percentages of trade here again we can see oh this is interesting this tells us how much the this is reverse engineered to tell us how much uh gdp equals from which we can uh, work out many other things there we have global how many houses built and back to the water which we saw at the beginning okay i think we're done it's a long one it's a long video but uh yeah i hope uh i hope it goes down well thanks very much for reading what reading or listening rather and uh you guys have a good day